Hi folks, this is Ben Collins here from benlcollins.com here to tell you about some techniques that you should know for Google Sheets formulas. So 18 techniques that will really help you work efficiently with formulas and maximize uh, your own formulas. We'll start with some very easy tips, but stick with me and see if you know all 18. So let's get started with numero uno, number one. So say we're creating this formula. We just want to calculate a percentage here of a given value. Then we want to lock this reference up here, B1. We'll press F4. So that's the F4 key to toggle between the absolute and relative references. Okay, so tip number two. So highlight a cell with the formula in, press F2 to quickly bring up the formula. Tip number three, press shift plus the return key, which is also just, of course, shift plus enter to quickly jump into the formula. So tip number four, when you're inside your formulas and you want to exit them and discard the changes if you've made a mistake, press the escape key. Tip number five, if you have really long formulas, this is quite a useful one. Press the up arrow to move to the front of your formula with the cursor, press the down arrow to move to the end of your formula with the cursor. Tip number six, read, use, learn, understand, and learn to love this formula helper pane. The most useful thing I think is the syntax explanation up here. And when you click on your different pieces of your formula, it tells you where you are. It highlights them yellow for you with an example as well. So we're looking up A2. Here's our range, and then after the next one is our index, and finally, whether we're sorted or not. So it's really, really handy to, for, for the longer formulas to, for it to keep track of where you are inside the formula. Explains what all the bits are, worth a look. Tip number seven is these, uh, use these colored ranges to help you identify what your, uh, what your formula is doing and which, which pieces of data it's using. So the A2 there in, orange and this purple range is on another sheet and this is where the next tip comes in so the orange was showing us a2 the purple is on a different sheet to show us the range press f2 again and it takes you to that range there it highlights it in purple here shows us it uh, in the in the actual sheet two as well so hit escape to go back to our page one our sheet one Tip number nine, when you're looking for a formula, don't type the whole thing in, just press the equals, press the first letter, maybe the second letter, and then it will come up from that short list. You can also use the up and down arrows to move through the different formulas. And when you find the formula you want and it's highlighted, just hit the tab key, which is tip number 10, the tab key, to just select your formula for you. Tip number 11, is hover over the formula bar up here till you get that double headed arrow and drag down to make your formula bar much wider, which is really useful when you have some big long formulas that go over multiple lines. So you can make that formula editor window as big as you want up to about the half of your screen there. Okay, tip number 12 is to use the quick aggregation tip down here in your toolbar, the quick aggregation toolbar. So it gives us a count when we're highlighting the, the text there. If we've got numbers, it will give us some options. So it gives us a quick sum, a max, a min, an average. So it's a really quick way if you're working with data like this and you want to know what was my total revenue, $2,057, without having to write a function out for you. So it's just a quick times lever, that one. Okay, if you want to fill down a formula very quickly, then you can just highlight the range that you want to fill the formula in for. So I have this formula in A3. I want to highlight and fill it all the way down to A13. Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC or a Chromebook fills that formula in for you. This is generating random numbers. That's why the 90 changed there. Another way is to double click this blue square in the corner there if it's showing up and that will fill that down for you. Okay, tip 14 is array formulas, just a quick demo of what they are and an encouragement to go away and learn about them. So if I wanted to get the 
If I want to work out this 10% of all these values at once, I can highlight them all, multiply by the before, shift and shift command, enter, and it will just give me that array formula there. Okay, tip 15 is use these curly braces to create arrays. What do I mean by that? I mean, you can enter data like this, hit enter, and it will give you, it spreads the output over multiple columns. So to, to create columns to, in the same row, you use a comma to separate. If you want to do a new row, you use a semicolon there to denote a new row. And then each row has to have the same number of columns, i.e. the same number of um, commas. Hit enter now, and it gives me one, two, three, four. And you can use these arrays inside your regular formulas, just as if it was an output of data like this, one, two, three, four, sitting in your spreadsheet. So you can create interesting arrays of data just using these square, these curly brackets. So well worth mastering. Okay, number 16, you can spread your formulas over multi lines, multiple lines if you want by pressing control and enter to move things onto a new line. So if you fancied having all of your VLOOKUP arguments on different lines to make it super readable, then you're totally at liberty to do that. When you get longer and more complex formulas, it's really helpful to spread them out like this over multiple lines. Okay, so this is an interesting one now. Let's add a comment to this formula. So where the five is, this is the index, this is the row that we want. And we're going to say, plus n, open brackets, this returns the revenue column. And now anyone coming in to look at your formula can read this comment and say, oh, this is looking up the revenue column. So there it is, the revenue column, that's the one we chose with the number five. And the way this is working is that if I copy that piece of the formula, we want to, if I copy this in now, it's going to give me a zero. The N formula converts um, an argument into a number and text is converted to a zero. So that it just converts that text to a zero. So when we have five plus N like that, it simply just gives me an output of five. And so this here is just going to give me an output of five. It's five plus zero, which is five, which returns the revenue column number five. So that's comments in a formula. And then the last tip, number 18. So this is the onion method. Uh, it's a framework for approaching complex formulas. Now, there are t complex formulas and onions have two things in common. They, they, they both have layers and they both make you cry. And we're going to look at this approach of using layers. So Starting from the center, we just add layers of complexity. And in, uh, each time we add a layer of complexity, we, we use a new cell. So we build the formula up in steps and we have a record of all our previous steps so that we are learning what the output is from each step. And we can use that then as the input to the next step. So the only approach is to do it in steps. So the first step, we're going to just set up a match formula. And we're going to highlight our data. That's our search key. We're going to search for each one of these. I'm going to try and match it in the same range. And we want an exact match. So that's step one there. It just gives us a one. Huh? And that's not particularly useful, you're saying. I'm going to lock these references so I can copy this formula easily. So the onion approach, rather than now saying, okay, we'll turn this into the array formula, the onion approach says, okay, copy this into the next cell and then turn that into the array formula. And all it does is just give us the first um, number of the first match. So Texas, for example, matched position two in this list. So when I hit Texas again, I still give it the number two. When I hit Texas again, it still gets number two. So now what we'll do is step three of this onion approach. And again, I'll copy this into a new cell so I don't have to, uh, I don't lose the um, previous steps. And then we'll just add a mode in there to this formula and hit enter. And it's telling me the most frequent. So the mode is, 
is the most frequent, uh, the most commonly occurring value in the data set, and it's a number two. So then finally, we can get to step four, which is just to now use the index. So we'll add the index into here. And again, we want to highlight the range from A1 down to A20. Let's just lock it to be consistent. And then the row we want is two, and then we're not gonna specify a column because we only have the single column anyway. So I'll hit enter, and that will give me the output there of Texas. Let's make that green. And there we go, that's the onion approach. Okay, folks, there we go. That was a quick whiz round Google Sheet formulas. So 18 techniques to go and try. Hopefully you know most of them already, but hopefully there are also a few new ones you've learned and picked up today. Thanks, folks. See you again soon.